Come on and give God a mighty shout. Oh, come on, a mighty shout. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship. Just worship. Lift up your heavenly language. Lift up your heavenly language right now. Oh, I don't hear you, church. Lift it up. 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 Join with heaven right now. That's it, that's it, that's it. Go, 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 go. There's a sound that God has put within you. It's a sound that are not words on a screen. It's a song. It's the song of the redeemed. Let it rise out of your innermost being. Be ushered in. Be ushered in. Be ushered in. Be ushered in. in. To the holy of holies. For a few more moments, lift it up, lift it up. Enter in. That's it, that's it. Lift up that sound.
ushered in. Be ushered in. open your alabaster box praise will break open the atmosphere but adoration will take you in to the holy of holies will break open the atmosphere but adoration will take you in to the holy of holies Father, we pray tonight that we will be ushered into the Holy of Holies. Father, there are realms of your glory that we are yet to taste. Teach us how. Teach us how to worship you in spirit and in truth. Teach us about adoration. Teach us about intimacy. Teach us how to host your glory, Lord. Just lift your hands for a few more moments. Now just adore him, adore him. Let him hear your adoration. Arizona, we adore you. Lamb of God, we behold you. You are holy. So holy. Tell him, tell him. Church, tell him, sing it to him with all your heart. 
church. So many of our songs today, we sing about God and we sing about us. But true worship is when you sing to Him. <laughs> <laughs> see when you begin to sing to him and you tell him who he is his glory begins to come Praise <laughs> Father, tonight we magnify your name. Let your Shekinah glory come and rest in this upper room. Church, when we encounter His glory, you're ruined for life. You're ruined for life. Isaiah said, I am undone. I am undone. They said of the disciples, Have not these men been with Jesus? They said they've turned the world upside down. They'd been in the presence. They'd been in the glory, the presence of the Holy Ghost. Could you lift your hands and welcome the Spirit of God? He's here right now. Come on, just welcome Him. Welcome Him. Tell Him you love Him. We love you, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have come to reveal Christ. We pray tonight that revelation would flow into every life that there would be a mighty impartation that the fire of Pentecost would burn in this place white hot Father that you would cause every person to understand that you have given a flame for every head for every person there is a flame. Let a mighty anointing rest upon every single one in that is here. I take authority over every sickness, over every disease, over every bondage, over every stronghold. I bind it in Jesus' name. And as a servant of Jesus Christ, I command it to loose you and let you go. Father, I pray tonight and I declare that we are standing on holy ground and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, let the atmosphere be filled with miracles and faith. Let a fire burn in Arizona. But let this fire 
bring out of the desert place rivers of living water if you believe it tonight I want you to shout hallelujah shout it like you really mean it hallelujah I feel like we could have church right now you know church I really believe that the Holy Spirit longs to take the people of God into new realms of his glory how many want to know how to just enter in more and more into the Holy of Holies You know, there's a man of God that's just gone to be with the Lord, Brother Damola. He's from the east side. I was with him with Pastor Kilpatrick a number of years ago. I preached there. There were about four or five thousand people in that place. We started worshiping just like we were doing a moment ago. And the glory of God came into that auditorium. All the worship team were on their faces and suddenly I mean it felt like the air became filled with particles like electricity it was like around my head it was I know some of you are gonna look at me like I'm weird it was so incredible I was stood with pastor and we, we came to the pulpit just to address the congregation and a literal wind and now I'm not talking about in the spirit or I'm not talking about in my head I'm talking about a literal wind began to blow and swirl around the pulpit here so much so that you know Pastor Kilpatrick he's six foot three it started to push us out of the pulpit pushed us all the way to the back wall and I was clutching on to pastor and this thing was just pushing us, pushing us. And the second we were out of the pulpit, I mean the glory of God hit that auditorium. People started screaming and shouting like they were in the biggest Super Bowl you've ever seen in your life. For one hour and 45 minutes. This thing just went on and on and on. It was like the Spirit of God pulled praise out of that auditorium that literally was just breathtaking. People were wailing, falling in the floor, nobody talking, no instruments playing, no words on a screen. And I don't know about you, but if that realm of God's presence and glory is available, I want to go in. I want to go in to the... Oh. oh, somebody say amen. I believe tonight, every night God has been just releasing the glory in this place. But how many want God to just rain down in this place? Come on, I want you to lift your hands and just pray. Ask God to touch you in a mighty way. Ask Him to reveal His glory in your life. Go ahead, just for a few seconds, ask Him right now. I can't pray it for you. You ask Him, Lord, touch me. Fill me tonight. I never want to be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Now give God a shout of praise. Before you're seated, tonight is a night of impartation. Sunday night, some of you are going to go to work on Monday morning, drunk in the Holy Ghost. So full of the anointing. But also it's a very serious thing. I take it very very seriously it's a holy thing so tonight is not a tingle down your spine 
I've been through these lines so many times in my own life. There was a night the Lord touched me in a mighty way. I've had few visions in my life. Very early on, I saw the visions of all the, the vast crowds that you see on the videos today. I saw them in a vision. But I've had few visions in my life. I know people that God tells them what breakfast cereal to have in the morning. Those people scare me a lot. Because when God speaks to you, it will define you. I said when God speaks to you, it will define you. But one night God touched me in a mighty way in a service. I was in the Royal Albert Hall in London. As the power of God came upon me, I saw as clear as anything, there was a red line. This red line. And suddenly, I stepped over the red line and God's voice spoke to me. The Spirit of God said to me, Son, from this day, there is no going back for you. And in my spirit, I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, you have answered the call and now I've anointed you. There's no going back. And I didn't understand it at the time, but I do today. Because when God anoints your life, that means He requires something of you. See, we always say we want more anointing, more anointing. Listen to me. When God anoints your life, He requires something of you. Whom to much is given, much is. There's no going back for you. There's no in and out, up and down. You are dying to yourself. You say, yes, Lord, I take this assignment. I take this commission. I'm ready. There's no going back. That's why tonight, those of you that come through here, I'm going to lay my hand on you. But I'm telling you right now, God will require of your life. See, what we don't preach anymore in the church is that every one of us will stand see we think that's just for the sinners but the Bible speaks of two the great white throne and the judgment seat of Christ you see the sinners they will be judged but the Christians, the children of God, they will be judged for what they did with what God gave unto them. That is the true revelation of the talents. It's not the sinners. It's the saints. That means I take this very seriously. When we lay our hands upon you tonight, I am believing for the same manifestation that happened in my life to happen in yours. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. Young and old, how many ready? Oh, how many are ready to say, Lord? I want that impartation in my life. Say yes, Lord. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. Just play for a few more minutes. It's been such a privilege to be at Fresh Start, Arizona. Pastor Paul, Kim Owens, we love you. I know we've only just met, but I feel a kindred spirit. I thank God for your hunger. And I'm not saying, hear me, I'm not saying you're old. I'm just saying when, when I get to your age, 
No, I'm serious. This is not a joke. I want to be as hungry as they are. You ought to thank God. You ought to thank God right now that you are pastors that are hungering and contending for the presence of God. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for Jessica and the whole worship team. What an incredible, incredible. I, uh, I asked Pastor last night, but uh, we hold a, a conference every year, one in Europe and one in America. And uh, I'm going to invite Jessica to come and sing for me one night. I hope she says yes. I hope she says yes. But I feel like preaching to you tonight. You know the offering that you gave. I'm about to leave next week for El Salvador. Can we show the stadium right there? Or oh, it's pretty dark on there. This is the soccer stadium in the capital in El Salvador. And I want to say that every penny that you gave tonight is going to go into this crusade. Now, you may see an empty stadium, but you know what I see? <laughs> I see thousands of people. I see healing and miracles. I see salvation. I see the heavens being shaken over that stadium and over that nation. And let me tell you right now what you've given tonight. When we stand before God, you will partake of that reward. Somebody say amen. amen. I've been playing many videos, but on the first night, I played a video from Panama. We've just been in Panama last in January. And they've invited me to go back there in May and I will sit with the president and also preach in the, what they call the Colosseum. And you know, I believe that we're entering into days where God is going to cause whole nations to shake. Now, I know for some of you, you're looking at me like, oh yeah, I heard it all before. But I'm serious. That governments will shake. I said governments will shake. I go into Honduras this year for what the government are holding a day called the Bible Day. They have called the nation to prayer. I will go there and preach in their national stadium. And I believe God is getting ready to shake whole nations. You know when God called me to the ministry, He gave me this vision. And in the vision, he, he told me, he said, you will call it Shake the Nations. And it was a very authoritative voice. It wasn't the still small voice. It was a strong voice. It was like, this is what you will call it. God showed me the scripture in Haggai 2.7. seven says, I will shake all nations. And they will come to the desire of all nations. That's Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I will fill this house with glory, <laughs> says the Lord of hosts. And then I saw, literally, in one night, I saw not just myself, but I was preaching in a stadium, a huge stadium. But then the Holy Spirit, He took me around this nation. And I, I don't know where I was, but I went all over and there were evangelists in every stadium and every field all over the nation. And God said, I will give you those evangelists. I will give you the blueprint of literally how to harpoon hell. How to punch a hole right in the middle of darkness that a nation will tremble under the mighty hand of God. Somebody say amen. Yeah. That's why we're looking right now in our, in our 
headquarters in Orlando were already planning. I've got to start a school. I've got to start something where they can catch the DNA. You know, in America, your nation used to be one of the greatest nation of evangelists the world had ever known. In the 1940s and 50s, the healing wells were birthed. You had evangelists that literally shook the modern church. But I want to ask you a question. Where are they now? America! Where are our evangelists? We must have a move of God because evangelists are birthed in the fire. They're not birthed in teaching sessions. They're not birthed in nice little classes. Evangelists are birthed in fire. So I'm asking God, Lord, bring me the burning ones. Young and old, man or woman, I don't care. Just bring me the burning ones. And I believe God is raising up the next generation of evangelists that are going to preach the uncompromised gospel of Christ. Oh, can you say amen? amen. I'm going to play you a video right now. How many this is your first night tonight? Oh my goodness, look at all these people. Okay. Good to see you. Well, I might play just a couple of videos. Let's just play Panama. I just came back from Panama, the national stadium there. Watch this. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He who follows me, y aquel que me sigue a mí, shall not walk in darkness, but our God is light. Nuestro Dios es luz. And in Him, y en él, there is no darkness. No Lord Jesus, I receive you now. Te recibo ahora. As my Lord, as my Savior. Como mi Salvador. Forgive me of my sins. Perdona mi I belong to Jesus. Soy de Jesús. I command every sickness. Yo ordeno que toda enfermedad. Go. Se va. Go. Se va. Go. Go. If you believe it. Si lo crees. Shout hallelujah. So you were deaf in this ear? Pero usted era sorda en ese oído? I could not hear very well. No me can feel. I can hear very well. What, what happened tonight? ¿Qué pasó esta noche? ¿Qué pasó? I felt like a warmness in my ear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody shout hallelujah! I came to son my daughter today. She's in a coma right now. That's why I came right now here. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the angel of the Lord go to that hospital right now. Nathan, this is Jose. You prayed for him earlier. Nathan, Jose, you prayed for him earlier. Antes, but she's, he's just received word that she's opened her eyes. Acaba de recibir la noticia de que ella acaba de abrir los ojos.
let me tell you what I hear in my heart. There's no stadium big enough. There's no field big enough. There's no place that can hold what God's about to do in the nations of the world. She was in an accident on Christmas Day, 22 and a half years previous. It left her paralyzed from the waist down. The power of God is all over this sister right now. with this like I can jump now I can jump I can... she's had bulging disc on her sciatic nerve she just lived in 22 years of pain any one of these canes yours she could only see out of one eye her left eye can you see my fingers you're holding five do it again two do it again one shall be preached as a witness to all the world. We are the generation that are seeing the words of Jesus come to pass. These are the days that we are about to see the glory of God touch and sweep the nations of the world. He called you for such a time as this with a purpose designed for you to fulfill to the glory of His name. Lord Jesus, we bring you our lives. Мы приносим наши жизни. Wash me in your blood. I repent of my sin. Я каюсь в твоих грехах. I believe you died Я and верю, rose again. умер и воскрес снова. And through Jesus Christ. И через Иисуса Христа. I am saved. Я What a mighty God we serve. Can you say amen? I said, what a mighty God we serve. Can you say amen? You know, God has given us his spirit. He has sent the Holy Spirit that he might dwell in us and through us that we might be witnesses to the ends of the earth. You are born, you are made, you are called to be a witness. To bear witness of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Tonight I want to preach to you a message in my heart. I was sat on the front row and the Spirit of God just said to me, tell them I have given them an assignment. I want everyone to say that. I have a God-given, anointed assignment. It is for my life, given by God. That is why I was made. I want you to turn with your Bibles, please, to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 2. The book of Exodus chapter 2. Somebody say amen when you have it. You know, these days I used to wait till I heard the, the, the rustling of the pages. And when that stopped, I began to read. 
But today everyone has iPhones. I don't know what's going on. The devil gets confused these days. I'm not sure he knows what's in your iPhone. I tell you, I love to see the people with a Bible in church. Call me old school. I just love to see a Bible. I, I love it. I love the rustling of those pages. The devil gets nervous when you start to rustle those pages. That's your sword. I said, that's your sword. That's how you fight. Somebody say, the word of God is my sword. I need to learn how to use it. Exodus chapter 2. The Bible says, and a man from the house of Levi went up and took as a wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch and put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the river side, and when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women? that she may nurse the child for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. I love that. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. Wow. Now I want you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 12. The Gospel of John chapter 12, and I'm going to read from verse 20. And somehow, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we're going to join these two scriptures together. Somehow. Help me, Jesus. John chapter 12, verse 20. Somebody say amen when you have it. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, answered them saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, get ready church, open your heart, curl your toes in. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. I want somebody to say, I have an assignment. I preach many times, especially to my generation, that my heart is broken because in our generation, we have an identity crisis. We have a generation that are searching for who they are and why they're here. 
And what breaks my heart is hell is working overtime to fill their minds and fill their hearts and fill their, li- their lives with the lies of hell. It reminds me in the Bible when it said of Israel, there was no king in Israel and men did what was right in their own sight. So now we don't even know what gender we are. Hell is attacking the very foundation of God's creation. And there's no way that God has called us to sit back, be silent, and just let it happen. There's no way. God said we are the salt, and in us is the light. And we must stand and be bold and realize that our assignment is to preach Christ to the ends of the earth. This gospel shall be preached. This gospel shall be preached. Not just the evangelists, not just the famous preachers. Every one of you have been called to be a witness. Every one of you has an assignment. You're not an accident. I said you're not an accident. God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Think about it for a minute. Before your father met your mother and your daddy had the twinkle in his eye, God had already designed you. He'd already ordained you. He'd already purposed you. I love it in Romans when the Bible says that we are called according to his purpose. I ain't drifting through life. I said I ain't drifting through my life. My steps have been ordered by the Lord. I have been given an assignment. Let me tell you, your assignment and my assignment, they're not the same. God has specifically designed something for you that only you can fulfill. That's why he made you the way he made you. He made me to shout a lot. I said he made me to shout a lot. I can't help it. It's how it comes out. Let me tell you how I know. I was in a meeting, a prophet came to me, he didn't even know I was a preacher. I was just saved, he said, God says to you, he saw you preaching in your bedroom and the stadiums have already been filled. And as a sign to you, God said, I've made your voice like a hammer to break up the stony places. And this is what the Lord promised me. He said, I promise you, your voice will never fail you. And I tell you right now, I preach night after night after night in those stadiums, in fields, in the revivals. And I'm telling you, my voice has never failed me one time. That's why I know that I have an assignment to declare the gospel with boldness. God has given you an assignment. Who, me? Yes, you. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? He chose you. This is not one of those deals where you're the last person on the team and God says, oh, okay. (laughs) He chose you. He chose you in him from the foundation of the world. Think about that. You ought to sit there and say, glory to God. Lord, you chose me. You chose me to be your servant, to be your son, to be your daughter. You didn't just choose me. You anointed me. You separated me. You called me by name. See, the devil will spend your whole life trying to tell you the lie that you're insignificant. But I'm telling you in Jesus' name, God does not make insignificant things. He makes original, designed for his plan, his purpose. Let me tell you right now. 
What you've been through in life, hell has tried to destroy you. But I'm telling you in Jesus' name, even what was meant for evil, God will turn it around for the good of those that love Oh my God, my God, my God. <laughs> you were made for destiny moments. There are some things in your life that are going to happen. You can't plan it. You can't even pray enough to make it happen. There are some things that God has sovereignly ordained for your life. I've learned in my life, I ain't jealous of what you got. Because I know whatever you got, hell is searching for it. But God has designed your path. There are destiny moments. There are divine connections that God will bring at the right time in the right place. I love that scripture when it says that creation longs, it is yearning, it is, it is wailing, it is waiting in anticipation for the sons of God to be revealed. Destiny moments. There are some people that they say to me, well, how did you get there? How did that happen? I say, I don't know. See, I'm not chasing fame. I'm not chasing a job, popularity. This is my assignment. See, what God has given you to do, it is holy. He planned your course. He planned your assignment before he made the heavens and the earth. Do you understand how dangerous you are to hell? You know my grandmother, she saw more people saved in the last 10, 15 years of her life than in all the years before. She cried in my arms because my granddaddy went to be with the Lord and she said, Nathan, I don't know why God left me here. God had just birthed me in ministry. I just got saved. She wept every time. But I said, Grandma, I want you to come to one of my services. And she used to wear one of those Pentecostal skirts. You know the ones? I said, Grandma, when you come to my meeting, don't wear a skirt, wear trousers. She said, son, I, I don't know about trousers. I said, just, just put the trousers on. <laughs> See, all her life she prayed. She used to win souls in her living room. She'd invite them in for a scone and a cup of tea. That's so English, huh? They didn't realize it, but they were being ambushed. More people got saved, but I remember that night my grandmother came in that service. And I'm preaching just like I am now, and suddenly I heard this, Woo! Now my grandmother, she was Pentecostal. She was a Holy Ghost tongue talking, but she was, she wouldn't say boo to a goose inside a meeting. She would sit there silent. You couldn't give her a million dollars to stand up and say a word. And I heard, Woo! I ignored the first one. Woo! I ignored the second one. Woo! My grandmother slipped out of that second row. She rolled, literally rolled down the aisle and arrived at my feet in the altar. The Lord absolutely, I mean, wrecked my grandmother that night. And you know from that day, she said, I know why the Lord left me here. There was an assignment there was a purpose that I would know him more in these final days than I've ever known him in all the years that I have served him. She was in every revival service. 
Before she went to be with the Lord, she'd be laying hands on people that they'd be getting in touch with the fire. Let me tell you, you have an assignment. You might have gray hair. You might be retired, but you're not retired in the kingdom of God. There is a purpose. There is a plan. There is a destiny. See, hell is searching for the children of destiny. Moses was a child of destiny. God had chosen him to lead out the children of Israel. I wondered why as a child I'd be in so many accidents. I would run over. I'd drown. I mean, my mother, she said, I could only have one of you, boy. But you see, hell is searching, trying to destroy the destiny and the plans of God. God said, I'm going to birth Moses. Have you ever noticed when God's birthing something in your life, it's like all hell gets let loose? You know, you say, God, I'm going to answer the call on my life. And suddenly all hell is let loose. In your home, in your children, in your work, you're under attack. You know why? Because when God is birthing something in your life, hell is searching for the child. God said, I'm going to birth a destiny child. His name will be Moses. Pharaoh said, kill the children. Did you notice that when Jesus was born, hell did exactly the same thing? You wonder why America has seen over 55 million children aborted? Oh, you don't want me to preach that. Hell is searching the womb of America, trying to find the destiny child. That's why hell's been attacking you. But I serve a God. Hell said, find the child, kill the womb. That's why you need to be careful who you share your dreams with. That's why you need to make sure that every relationship in your life is a divine relationship, that it is a pure relationship. Because there are people that the enemy will send into your life. They're not there to bless you. They're there to try and kill your womb. Hell said, find the child. God said, See, when God called you, he'd already covered you. That's why hell's been searching. Hell said, find the child. God said, you'll never find him. You know why? Because I've hidden him. Oh, you didn't get that. I'll be back in a moment. God said, you'll never find him because I've hidden him. See, when God hides you, no devil in hell can find you. That's why the psalmist said, hide me in the shadow of the Almighty. That's why the psalmist wrote, you are my hiding place. You are my refuge. You are my strong power. God said, I've hidden Moses. You see, I serve a God that will hide you. He'll hide you in order to hide the dream and the purpose and the plan that he has for your life. See, the thing about Moses was this. He was called to lead out a mighty, mighty people, but he wasn't ready. Can I just show you something? Just because God's God... Let me show you how God, through your life, will just show the devil exactly who he is. You see, God didn't just hide Moses. He hid him in the very house. Wow. 
Pharaoh said, find him. God said, I'm going to hide Moses in the house of Pharaoh, right under the devil's nose, and the devil will never find him. That's why hell has been searching for you, but God hits you. He hits you right under the enemy's nose, because there's a plan, there's a destiny, there's a purpose for your life. If you believe it, shout, amen. That's why that thing didn't kill you. That's why you should have died. That's why that jail cell should have killed you. But you didn't die. That's why I drowned, but I didn't die. God hid me. You ought to praise God that he hid you. Because I serve a God that when he hides you, he hides you, and then he reveals you. And when he reveals you, there's an anointing on your life that no devil in hell can stop. You ought to praise God that he hid you. Hide me. Hide me. Hide me. Hide me. In the shadow of the Almighty. And just because he's God, and God has no orphans, he caused the devil to choose his own mother. He caused the enemy to choose Moses' mother to nurse him, and he made the devil pay her to do it. Oh, you ain't ready for me tonight. You ain't ready for what God has for you. See, all of your life, even when you thought the enemy had just had done something damage to your life, I want to tell you that wasn't damage. That was preparation. That was God saying, devil, you're searching, but you'll never find him because I've hidden her. I've hidden him because when I reveal them, there's no devil that will be able to stop them. Give God a praise if he hid you. Woo! Oh, I got to move on. I got to move on. We could be here all night when I get preaching on this. Because I've learned in my life that when God anoints you, he'll hide you and reveal you. He'll hide you and reveal you. He hid David. He hid David so well that the prophet couldn't even recognize him. He nearly anointed the wrong man. The mighty prophet. You know the only reason he didn't get it wrong? When he went to pour the oil over the wrong brother, the oil didn't pour. He said, something's wrong. The oil won't flow. See, that's why I don't fight for your position. That's why I ain't fighting for your title. I ain't in a competition with you. Because I've learned that when God has an anointing for your life, if anybody tries to wear your clothes, if anybody tries to walk like you, talk like you, the only problem is the oil won't flow. When God calls you, you don't need to fight. You don't need to get jealous. You don't need to try and compete. Just get in your position. And when you do, the oil will begin to flow. See, that's why David didn't need Saul's armor. Because while God hit him, he was training him. He said, I've hit him. But while I hit him, I trained him. I've taught him how to kill a bear, how to fight the lion. I've taught him how to defend sheep. That's why I'm going to make him a king to defend my people. That's why he's going to be a man of war. Because he taught me. Uh, he was taught how to worship while he's hidden. 
see when God revealed him people didn't recognize him but they soon realized what was in his hand he knew how to use his weapon and you see there are so many people in the body of Christ they want the microphone or they want the light they want the position but they don't understand the, the, people get all bent out of shape if you don't recognize them I love it when people come up to me they say do you know who I am I'm like no am I supposed to look into my eyes do you know who I am no. People say crazy things like, God has told me I have a greater anointing than you. I said, praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to see the devil you're fighting. I want to see what you're going through. But the problem is, is they don't know what it is to be hidden. Because they're trying to reveal themselves. And that's how you get in trouble. When you try and put yourself in a position that only God can set before you. That's why we got people in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. And there's no anointing because they don't know what it is to be hidden and be revealed. I'm preaching to you right about now. See... Some of the most precious things God will hide. In the Gospel of Matthew, it says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. What? Hidden in a field. Can I show you something? You want to know the most powerful thing that God ever hid? I want to show you because I'm going to preach to you something. Because I believe there's going to be a metamorphosis in your life right now. You say, what's a metamorphosis? That's why I'm preaching. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, 8 says, How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing. But we, everyone say we. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world, unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew now whenever the Bible talks about princes it's not just talking about earthly kings if you study it it literally means principalities and powers the kingdom of darkness are you with me get ready this is one of my favorite scriptures It says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, <laughs> if the devil would have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> that means the devil made the biggest mistake of his life. Do you know the devil always makes a mistake? They've heard this so many times, they can preach it better than me. This next line, it's one of my favorites. Do you know the devil always makes a mistake? I'm telling you right now. God taught me very early. He said, watch out, watch, just be careful, be still. The devil will make a mistake. And when he does, that'll be your break. I said, the devil always makes a mistake. See, hell's biggest mistake was that they thought that the cross was their idea. <laughs> See, the devil always makes a mistake. He made a mistake when he tried to attack your life. See, Paul and Silas, they were in the jail cell. The devil beat them, he punished them, and he put them in jail. You say, how's that a mistake? The devil always makes a mistake. And the mistake is what leads to the power of God being manifested. God gets all the glory. 
I don't know about you, but if we went on a crusade and we ended up in a jail cell, beaten up, lashed and beaten, you'd say, evangelist, are you sure you heard God? Oh, you're silent. Okay. You came on one of my teams and we were all in jail. You'd just been whipped and punched and kicked. And now you're in a jail cell. You'd be evangelist. Are you sure we were supposed to come here? Paul and Silas were in a jail cell, beaten almost to death. How was, how was that a mistake? The mistake was not that he beat them. The mistake was not that he lashed them. Hell's mistake was that he put Paul and Silas in the same jail. Oh, you don't hear me. Because Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be with them. You ought to give God a praise right now. Hell made a mistake. Watch this, watch this. Woo-wee! <laughs> you like that, sister, huh? Bless God. Every, every so often, just say, he put them in the same cell. See, hell's mistake was they thought the cross was their idea. They didn't see the blood. They didn't hear the blood. Oh, I wish I had time to preach to you about that. I'm so far off my notes right now, I don't know where I'm going. Because the blood speaks. Hell couldn't hear the sound. But the blood speaks. Hell believed that they were the ones that nailed him to the cross. Hell believed that the nails in his hands and feet was their idea. But how many know that the purpose of the cross was hidden? God hid it from the devil and he used the devil like a puppet in order that we might be redeemed. Jesus had an assignment and that assignment was revealed on the cross of Calvary. And when he rose from the dead, hell's biggest mistake was they never realized it was the plan of salvation. That the cross would be the way of our redemption. That the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood cried out. See, that's why the Bible says your life is hidden in Christ. You say, evangelist, why are you telling us all of this? Because there comes a time in your assignment, a pivotal moment in the call on your life, where God will require something of you. I read to you the scripture. I don't know how, I, I can't preach for much longer. I wish I could preach to you for hours. I just love to preach. Do you love the word of God? Don't you just love the word? I love the word, man. I love it. I love it when I hear something that I just go, jeez. Jesus came to this earth that he might die on a cross, that he might rise again. I read to you the scripture. The Greeks had come. They want to see Jesus. 
Philip and Andrew. I don't have time to preach this the way I want to preach it, but you know what I love? The Bible says that the Greeks came to Philip. Philip goes to Andrew, and then Philip and Andrew go to Jesus. You ever thought about that? Why didn't Philip just go? I don't know what was going on with Jesus, but it's like in the office if, if Nathan and Scott, my manager, Nathan's the director of Shake the Nations, but we have a U.S. manager. If they've got some bad news for me, it's like they both come. You know what I'm saying? Scott's like, we got bad news. You tell him. No, no, no. You tell him. No, we'll both tell him. But you see, Philip and Andrew, they go to Jesus and they say to Jesus, the Greeks have come. And Jesus looks at Philip and Andrew and he gives them the most crazy response to that question you could ever give. The Greeks have come. You see, Philip and Andrew said, this is a big moment. Jesus, if you show the Greeks, you see, the Greeks were not in the covenant, but they were seekers. Jesus, show them who you are. He's going to show them who he is. And Jesus turns to Philip and Andrew and he says, the hour has come that the Son of Man must be glorified. Lest the seed fall into the ground and die. The Greeks? Should we tell them to come back next week? Jesus is talking about agriculture. See, have you ever been in a destiny moment in your life? Have you ever been in a moment in the spirit where you feel something's taking place, that a shift is about to happen, that something's about to break? You see, there are times when God will call you to a higher place and the people that are around you will no longer understand you. Oh, I'm preaching. To, I might be preaching to, to some of you right now. But you see, when God gives you an anointing on your life and a calling, there comes a pivotal moment. You see, Jesus was about to go through something the disciples could not comprehend. See, the Bible says that we are being transformed from glory to glory. That word transformed is the Greek word metamufu. It means metamorphosis. Jesus was trying to tell the disciples, you don't understand. There's a change. There's a moment. There's a defining moment in my assignment. See, I've healed your sick. I've raised your dead. I've preached to you the kingdom. I've walked on water. I've commanded the elements. But there's about to be a metamorphosis. You see what the disciples didn't understand is the Greeks had come. But Jesus was saying this is not just about the Greeks. This is about every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every creed. This is about salvation to the Gentile. Young people, this is what I mean by this. You see, the disciples only ever saw Jesus in a limited form. He was called to the Jews. But Jesus was trying to say, this is not just for the Jews. This is for you and you. This is for you. But the disciples only recognized him in the form that he was in. Can I, ah, help me preach. Question. 
Have you gone as far as you can go in your current form? Jesus was saying, unless this happens, unless I die, unless I hang on the cross, you'll never know the fullness of God's plan. See, what the disciples didn't know is that the next time they would see Jesus, he would be in the glorified form. There was about to be a metamorphosis that hell never saw coming. I'm using the seed to preach to you. Is there about to be a metamorphosis in your life? Is God saying that I've blessed you as much as I'm going to bless you in the form that you are in? In order for you to go into the fullness of your assignment, something has to die. Oh, we don't like this preaching, huh? We love the whole power thing, anointing thing, and then we get to this bit, metamorphosis. Die, huh? What? But you see, I found in my life, in order for there to be a metamorphosis in my ministry. You see, there was only so far I could go in that form. For God to move me from there to a stadium, there had to be a metamorphosis. For God to move me into that realm of seeing miracles, signs and wonders, there had to be a metamorphosis. That is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. He wants to change your form. You see, the word metamorphosis means a change of form. That's why the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because the word will change your form. It's not a tingle. It's a metamorphosis. I've been changed. I know in whom I have believed. See, we want, we want church without change. That's why you're limited. That's why you've been held back. Because God says in order for you to step into your harvest, there has to be a metamorphosis. I've got to change you. I've got to change your mind. I gotta change your friends. I gotta change your position. I gotta change your heart. I gotta change your mindset. I gotta supernaturally put a dream and a destiny so that you see the way I see. You hear the way I hear. And until you die to yourself, lest the seed fall into the ground and die. We don't want the day and dying part. We want the harvest. You put $777 and you'll have a miracle every seventh day for the next seven years. I'll send you a bottle of this anointing oil. And for those of you that are really rich, you can send $7,777 and you'll have a dead miracle every seven hours for seven days. And What they don't tell you is, in order for a harvest to be birthed, you have to die. There has to be a metamorphosis. I've been changed. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. Paul got hit so hard on Damascus. God hit him so hard, it changed his name. God hit him so hard, it knocked the S and put a P there. I want you to notice that when God encountered, when, when Paul encounters God, he's naturally blind. 
Why? Because sometimes God will cause you to be blind in the natural in order to open your eyes to what God has for your next step, for your next season. I feel like somebody's about to get a metamorphosis right now. That God is changing your season. That there's coming a metamorphosis in your life. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise. Yes Lord. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How long do I have? We talk about Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. Why? When was Pentecost? When was Pentecost? Huh? See, if you talk to most people about Pentecost, they take your Acts 2. But that wasn't Pentecost. Pentecost was the celebration of the Passover. You see, you can't have Pentecost without the blood. <laughs> uh, can, can I teach you for a minute? Pentecost, penta means 50. The Passover, the Feast of Weeks. It was seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49. On the 50th day, Pentecost. It is the celebration from death to life. <laughs> you see, God doesn't make mistakes. The upper room, Pentecost, was right on time. You know why? Because the Passover was the celebration when the death angel God said if you put the blood on the doorpost death <laughs> that's why I preached the blood I said that's why I preached the blood because when you know the power of the blood, you don't even know what had to pass over you, even while you've been in this place. You don't realize that in your life, death had to pass over you. Because when the devil sees the blood, woo See, Jesus was saying, there's no Pentecost without the price. See, we want the power, but we don't want the price. See, see this is what's going wrong with more modern charismatic Christianity. We want fast food power. We want a one hour service, somebody slaps his hand on you and you're ready. I'm going to cast out devils. I'm sorry, friend. It don't work like that. You see, to the power, there's a process. The Spirit of God fell in the upper room on Pentecost because of the Passover. And you can't have Pentecost without a Passover. Lest the seed fall into the ground and die. We want revival. But nobody wants to pay the price. Just lay hands on me. Whenever I've met men and women of God that God is using around the world, they always tell me about the price before they do the power. You see, a metamorphosis means 
that some things are going to have to die. I'm talking to somebody right now. There are certain things that you need to cut from your life. There are certain voices that you're listening to that you need to sever tonight because there needs to be something that happens in your life because God says, I'm about to do a metamorphosis in your destiny. I'm about to take you to the next level. I'm about to move you into the greater harvest. Is anybody hearing what the Spirit of God is speaking right now? Somebody say metamorphosis. I've gone as far as I can go in this current form. Spirit of God, let there be a metamorphosis. Let there be a transformation in my life. Now give God a praise. I got to finish because I'm about to lay hands on anything that moves. You know what I love about Pentecost? Jesus was saying to the disciples, you can't recognize me now. You've known me in a limited form. But the next time you see me, there'll be no walls. You see, up until then, the disciples had been with Jesus. You see, on the day of Pentecost, they were in one place on one accord and suddenly they came down from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And he filled the whole house where they were sitting. And tongues as of fire came and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. There's the metamorphosis. It was Jesus, but in another form. And in this form, he would be in us. He would be in us. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now could dwell on the inside of you. That is the power of a metamorphosis. It is the power of Christ in us. The hope of glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want Lydia to play right now. I want you to stand to your feet all over this place. See, tonight, there's going to be glory that falls all over this room. I want you to lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. How many say, God hid me, but I'm about to be revealed. I said, God hid you, but he's about to reveal you. There's about to be a metamorphosis in your life. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. that which you have hidden in your people let it go from being hidden to be revealed let there be a metamorphosis somebody say Lord release me into the harvest release me into the harvest We are standing in your presence. 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 Should kind of glory come down. Come on, pray right now. We're about to begin an impartation service. We're going to pray for the glory of God to fill you. Should kind of glory come down. Standing in your presence, here we are. Standing in your presence, what's your kind of glory? Come down, what's your kind of glory? Come down, here we are. Standing in your presence, here we are. Standing in your presence, come on, church, lift your hands and worship. 
worship. Evangelist Nathan is going. He'll be right back out. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to fill this atmosphere with prayer, with faith. Come on. The impartation that God is bringing us. Hang on just a second. We're going to ask if y'all just hang on just a second. And here at Fresh Start and Revival, we're used to rushing the altars. But he may want to give a few different directions tonight. All right. Did he say what he... Okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. You just go back to your sections. Just keep standing. We're going to continue to worship. What we're going to do is we're going to dismiss you by sections. We're going to dis- and we're going to start right over here, okay? And you're going to come right over here, and you're going to sit in these chairs, and then he's going to lay hands on you and, and, and pray over you, okay? And then, and then we're just going to, as we, as we release each section, that's when you come forward, all right? That way we'll, we'll, we have to do this to keep it in order and to keep things moving, okay? So just wait. When you see somebody, release your section, all right? Come on, keep your heart ready, amen, till your section is called. Sorry that we have to do it like that, but there's so many people that are here tonight. How many want that impartation tonight, amen? Come on, I believe God is going to touch you powerfully tonight. A metamorphosis will happen, amen? Let's put our faith on it. Lift your hands. We're, the children are going to be coming in here first, and, and Evangelist Nathan is going to be laying hands on all your children. And then Pastor Rosalind and her team are going to take them back to the children's building. We're just believing a mighty outpouring of glory. Amen. Come on, Sister Lydia, lead us right now. Come on, lift your worship in this place. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey.
sing it out. Here we are, standing in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. Shekinah glory, glory come down. Now here's, here's what we're going to do tonight. Wow, look at all these children. Hi guys. How y'all doing? Doing good? Are you ready to pray to Jesus tonight? Yeah? Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to simply just stand on this chair right here. And we're just going to lead, I don't know, have you already told? Okay. We're just going to lead you through. I'm going to simply lay my hand upon you. And I'm going to ask God that there would be a powerful impartation in your life. That there would be a metamorphosis, a supernatural change. Can we lift our hands and just welcome the Spirit of God right now? See, there are things that God hid in you. There are things that God has hidden in your life. That He says, I'm about to reveal destiny and purpose and harvest and breakthrough. All we have to do is surrender. Say, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. I already feel a mighty anointing here. Listen, as we're beginning to pray for everybody tonight, please don't talk. Right now, this is a holy moment. I believe lives are never going to be the same again. If you need a miracle, just walk through. The same anointing will drive that sickness out of your body. But I want you to worship the Lord. Even while you're in the line coming through, I want you to be in an atmosphere of worship. Because this is not about me laying my hand on you. All I'm doing is joining with you in faith. Say, Lord, by your spirit, let there be a metamorphosis right now. Let there be a revival fire that is lit in you that will never be quenched. If you believe it, I want you to say amen. I want the worship team to begin to worship. And I want us to praise God right now. And I don't want you to quit. I want you to worship all your way through, all the way through here. But I'm telling you, when you come through here, there are some things that God is going to ask to die in you. Tonight, this is not just bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. God is saying to you, there's going to be a change of form. There are some things that are going to change in your environment, in your situation. There are going to be some people that don't understand you in the form you're in. But you're going to have to realize that not everybody can go where God's taking you. I said, you're going to have to realize that not everybody can go where God's taking you. I want everyone to begin to worship right now. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Shekinah glory come down. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Shekinah glory come down. Presence, here we are sitting in your presence. Shekinah glory 
Let's hit worship it.
let that oil flow. Let the oil flow. Now let the oil flow. right now you're in the holy of holies let the oil flow a metamorphosis I decree over every life a supernatural metamorphosis that that which has been hidden shall be revealed. That Lord, there would be men and women, children that are here tonight that will be mighty souls they will do great exploits for the kingdom. Tonight, let there be an impartation. Let it manifest in a mighty way. How many feel the power of God on you right now? Just lift your hand. 
Just thank Him. Thank the Lord. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. person next to you I want everyone just to join your hands together right now across this auditorium I did what the Holy Ghost told me to do. So now, Spirit of God, seal it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to count to three, and when I do, you're going to shout, fire. I want it to be the cry of your heart. shout the name of Jesus in this place when you speak the name of Jesus I'm going to count to three I want you to shout the name of Jesus when you do the power of God is going to flow throughout this place many of you are going to go from this place and something will just be released in your life something supernatural some of you are going to carry that anointing all the way back to your town, your city your church, your home I pray and release that miracles will break out in your life that God will give you boldness you will lay hands on the sick. Yeah. The blind eyes will open, deaf ears will open. I release that supernatural flow in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that by your Spirit, there will be a mighty anointing that would rest upon every life, that would bring a metamorphosis, a transformation in that situation in their circumstance, in their life, in their ministry, in their calling, in their destiny. I call forth every divine connection and destiny moment. I call forth that which you have hidden, that it now, let it be revealed. I'm gonna count to three. When you do, I want you to shout the name of Jesus. I want you to shout his name. Something will be released over your life. One. Two. Get ready. We're going to shout the name of Jesus. One. Two. Three. Fire!
what does it mean on a Monday morning? It means things are about to change. <laughs> you know, the enemy, the enemy would tell me, oh, it's all in your head. But you see, when God gives you a metamorphosis, you start to make some changes in your life. You say, no, I ain't going there no more. I ain't listening to that. I can't go with them. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because I knew I'd got an assignment. I've got an assignment. You've got an assignment. There were some people, they love God, but they don't understand my form. <laughs> they wanted me to stay where I was, but God said, no, I'm moving you on. I had to learn some people couldn't catch the train that I was going on. Suddenly you realize when this anointing gets on you, the people won't understand you. Don't argue. You're no more special than they are. You just have a different purpose. If you don't have a church, then you need to have a church. You need to be in soil where this destiny can grow. I'm tired of people running around like renegades. No authority. Get under authority. I don't care who you are. You better have a pastor. You better have men in your life that you fear enough. Never to sit down and say you cheated on your wife. You cheated on your husband. Are you hearing me, church? I want this metamorphosis in your life to cause God to grow something in you that is so mighty that hell begins to tremble. So Father, I release that supernatural increase. Let there be wisdom and revelation. Father, let this word not just be a preach. Let it become a word that is rooted, an anthem in their spirit. What has been hidden is about to be revealed. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Well, we got one more shout left in you tonight. Can we give the Lord a praise for all that he has done in this house? There's absolutely no words to define what God has done tonight. I truly believe that none of us will be the same again. I don't believe that Fresh Start Church will ever be the same again. I believe when we get back here Wednesday night for Gap, it's going to be like totally different. It's going to be like a, a, just a, a whole nother experience and realm of God's glory and power. Keep pressing, church. Keep going hard. Stay hungry. Because we're just beginning. What God has for this house, we have not even seen yet. Keep pressing. We have one more promise. We have one more miracle that we will not settle until.
who we see it come forth. I can tell you the day that they decided to amputate that leg was the day we decided it was going to grow back again now.
We commanded things to live in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Church, oh, help me. We release life, resurrection life, resurrection power, resurrection life in the name of Jesus. In the Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we release resurrection life. We release resurrection power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout miracles. Come on and put your hands together and praise Jesus in this place tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. Hallelujah. John, I speak resurrection life to your legs. Stretch your hands out over to John. Resurrection life. Resurrection life. Life, 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 life. We believe, we believe, we believe, we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We speak a resurrection life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe you will walk in Jesus' name. We believe a leg will be restored in the name of Jesus. Life in this atmosphere. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. I believe one day I'm going to be chasing John around this building. Come on. Come on. And Larry, too. Keep believing. Keep believing. We are believers more than anything else. Father, we just worship you. We give you all glory. I know you know this, Father, but we just want to say it and decree it. This is your house. We are your people. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place to do what you do. Anytime you want to do it. We thank you, Lord, that this is just the beginning of miracles. Y'all just stretch your hands right out this way. They're back there in the back. I just want to I just want to pray over them. Father, we just we just pray over Nathan in the name of Jesus. We pray for this team, God. As they go to the nations that they themselves will be blown away by what you're getting ready to do through their ministry. 
So tonight we bless them. We honor them. We pray they would never lack. And that the glory of the Lord would just get greater and greater upon them, God. Renew their strength for the journey ahead. Renew them in their bodies, in their spirits, in their minds, in their emotions. As they poured out to us, now that Lord, they're going to go pour out to the nations. And God, I pray for is a supernatural manifestation of grace upon them to accomplish and to fulfill their assignment. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. And the church said, come on, let's give the king one more mighty praise in the house tonight. Hallelujah.